For countless movie buffs, Vivian Lee will always be remembered as the valiant and stunning Scarlett O'Hara, the protagonist of the 1939 cinematic masterpiece Gone with the Wind. Lee's acting career in the British entertainment industry was short-lived when she was unexpectedly picked to play the female lead in what would eventually become one of the most iconic films in history. She played O'Hara, and her performance remained unmatched throughout her relatively brief yet sometimes tumultuous existence. Vivian Mary Hartley was born on November 5, 1913, in Darjeeling, a frigid mountainous region in India. Her father, Ernest Richard, was a stockbroker, and her mother, Gertrude, split their time between England and India, which was then a British colony. At age five, Lee attended a boarding school ran by nuns near London, where she began to develop a love for acting. Three years later, she appeared on stage for the first time in a production of A Midsummer's Night Dream. Lee couldn't recall a time when she didn't want to become an actress after that experience. Despite her eagerness to pursue a career in the theater, she put her aspirations on hold to finish her education. Lee went to finishing school in Paris, studying languages in Italy, and attended a girls' seminary in Bavaria. When she turned 18, her parents sent her to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts. Vivian Lee decided to take her stage career seriously in 1932. She married Herbert Lee Holman, a barrister from London that same year, and changed the spelling of her first name while taking his middle name. Lee welcomed a daughter, Suzanne, into the world in 1933, and landed a part in a British film called Things Are Looking Up in 1934, which marked the beginning of her career's ascent. Lee secured minor roles in several films before earning her first stage role in 1935 in a production of The Green Sash. Although the play never made it to London's theatre district, her performance captured the attention of Sidney Carroll, a West End producer. Later that year, she opened his production of The Mask of Virtue, which critics lauded, citing her striking beauty and impressive acting skills. This role was her big break, and she was awarded a five-year film contract as a result. Despite working over the next few years, Lee's career failed to reach the heights she had hoped for. From 1936 to 1939, she appeared in various British stage and screen productions. She played the Queen in a production of Richard II, directed by John Gilgood, one of England's greatest stage performers. Lee played Anne Boleyn in Henry VIII and Jessica Morton in Bats in the Belfry. In 1937, the Danish government invited her to play Ophelia opposite Lawrence Oliver's Hamlet. She also starred as the titular character in Serena Blandish on the London stage. Lee's career on the British silver screen was also taken off. In 1937, she played a lady-in-waiting to Queen Elizabeth in Fire Over England, again co-starring with Lawrence Oliver. This was followed by Dark Journey and Storm in a Teacup. The next year, she starred alongside American actor Robert Taylor in A Yank at Oxford, although the film was only Bustador's career. Lee also played a different kind of role that year, as a villainous character in St. Martin's Lane, released in the United States as The Sidewalks of London. Lee arrived in the United States in 1938 to visit Oliver on the set of Wuthering Heights. Oliver was renowned for his Shakespearean roles and was considered one of England's greatest stage actors. Lee and Oliver had fallen for each other during the filming of Fire Over England, and their highly publicized affair became the subject of much gossip, particularly as they were both already married. While Lee and Oliver were waiting for their divorces to come through so they could marry, David O. Selznick was in search of a leading lady. It was January 1939, and he had yet to find an actress to play the iconic role of Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind, one of the most sought-after roles in Hollywood history. The movie Gone with the Wind was already in production, but the role of Scarlett O'Hara had not been cast yet. David O. Selznick had already chosen other actors for important roles, including Clark Gable as Rhett Butler, Leslie Howard as Ashley Wilkes, and Olivia de Havilland as Melanie Hamilton. However, Selznick had yet to find the perfect actress to play Scarlet. Numerous actresses, including Joan Crawford and Lucille Ball, had already tested for the role, but Selznick was still unsatisfied with them. It wasn't until Selznick's brother, Myron, a talent agent, showed up on the set during the filming of the burning of Alana scene that he found the right person. 
Byron introduced Selznick to Vivian Lee, who stepped forward with green eyes glinting in the half-light. According to the Gone with the Wind homepage, Selznick believed that from the moment he saw Lee, with the flames of Atlanta playing across her face, he knew she was Scarlett O'Hara. Despite being given a screen test, it was merely a formality as Selznick had already made up his mind. Once the filming of Gone with the Wind wrapped up, Vivian Lee had been working almost non-stop for five months and was left feeling completely exhausted. However, her dedication to the project paid off when critics raved about her flawless and brilliant performance, which ultimately led her to winning the Academy Award for Best Actress. The film also won several other Academy Awards, including Best Picture, and its fame has continued to grow over the years, solidifying Lee's worldwide recognition. Lee's career experienced a bit of a setback when she and Lawrence Oliver starred in Romeo and Juliet in New York in 1940, but the production received poor reviews. However, any disappointment was quickly forgotten when the couple finally tied the knot in August of that same year. In December, they sailed to war-torn England where Oliver served in the Royal Navy and Lee worked for the American equivalent of the United Service Organizations. In 1941, Lee and Oliver made the film That Hamilton Woman, which depicted the real-life romance between Emma Hamilton and Lord Horatio Nelson. Though the film wasn't as well-received as Gone with the Wind, it still demonstrated Lee's acting range and versatility. Vivian Lee, who gained worldwide recognition for her unforgettable portrayal of Scarlett O'Hara, continued to bask in the adoration of her fans. But her talent went beyond that single performance. In 1945, Lee played a 16-year-old Cleopatra in Caesar and Cleopatra. Afterward, she appeared in the London production of The Skin of Our Teeth, directed by her husband, Lawrence Oliver. However, Lee's physical illness caused the play to close for a time while she recovered. Her battle with bouts of physical illness and mental breakdowns cast a tragic shadow over her many achievements. Lee found success once again when she took on the role of Blanche Du Bois in the Pulitzer Prize winning play by Tennessee Williams, A Streetcar Named Desire. Oliver directed her in the London stage production, and Elia Kazan directed her in the film version. In 1951, Lee won her second Academy Award for the role. That same year, Lee and Oliver appeared on St. James in London during the Festival of Britain. Vivian Lee and Lawrence Oliver's marriage ended in 1960, but Lee remained active in the theater. She made her Broadway musical debut in Tovarich in 1963 and starred in her last film, Ship of Fools, which was released in 1965. Tragically, on the night of July 7, 1967, Lee collapsed in her room and was found dead the following day by her partner, Jack Merivale. She had been struggling with bouts of illness and mental breakdowns for years. Lee's funeral was held on July 11, 1967, at St. Mary's Church in London. She was cremated at the Golders Green Crematorium, and her ashes were scattered in a lake in Sussex. In a touching tribute to the actress, all theaters in the West End extinguished their exterior lights for an hour on the night of her death as a sign of mourning. Vivian Lee's legacy lives on as one of the greatest actresses of the 20th century, with unforgettable performances in Gone with the Wind, and a streetcar named Desire. Goodbye, and rest in peace, Vivian Lee.